The AAC Report is brought to you by Blake Blayhead of Realty One Group. Whether you're looking to buy your very first home or looking to downsize or upgrade, call Blake Blayhead anytime at 407 748 0484. Welcome to the AAC Report, only on the Nightline Sports Network. I'm Jeff Allen. We thank you for joining us. Coming up, the Houston Cougars roll into first place in the men's basketball standings. We'll talk about that with Dustin and Sam from the Scott and Holman podcast in just a couple of moments. But first, Luke Fickle is staying put at Cincinnati. The Bearcats head coach was a candidate for the Michigan State job that came open when Mark D'Antonio stepped down. Fickle interviewed with Sparty over the weekend, but decided ultimately to remain in the Queen City, and he explains why. Family and 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 the relationships that you've built. And I know this is, at some point in time, things always come to an end, whether they get rid of you, um, you know, kids leave. You know, there are all kinds of things. But the bottom line is, first and foremost, family. Um, Obviously, my family loves it here. I got a unique situation with, you know, with the age of my kids, but also the relationships that you built. You know, to have this class coming in that's very, very, very special, and, and to have that first class that we recruited kind of being those guys at the very end of their um, of their college career going into it, um, it was a unique time for me and the family. And um, all in all, you know, we have to step back and make a selfish decision. That's what. I'll end up telling the guys, guys, I apologize. This is, I had to make a selfish decision, but the selfish decision was what was right for my family, and that is to be here, to be with you guys, and to continue to do what it is we've done. And I tell you, I think uh, Fickle lands that job if he'd stayed in the running. That would have been a big blow for Cincinnati. The Michigan State job eventually goes to Colorado's Mel Tucker. And it is my pleasure to welcome back to the AAC Reports, our friends from the Scott and Holman podcast. We have Sam and Dustin joining us now to talk Houston Cougars basketball. Guys, thanks for being here. Hey, always good to talk to you, Jeff. Thanks for having us, Jeff. Absolutely. And um, now, last week I featured Tulsa, and they immediately lost two games. So uh, your job is to make sure the Cougars don't lose so I do not become a jinx to whoever's in first place in the conference. (laughs) No pressure. No pressure at all. So here we are, the Cougars back in first place in uh, in a wild conference season that we have going on right now. And um, I think you guys are still scoring points on Wichita State from Sunday. Yeah, that uh, that game went uh, pretty well. As much as uh, this year has been kind of a uh, an inconsistent hit or miss uh, season for the uh, Cougar offense, putting the ball in the basket, certainly everything uh, clicked in that game against Wichita State. Uh, probably or not, not even probably, definitely Houston's best 40 minute uh, con- uh, you know effort for the uh, the season up until this point. And I mean, kind of the uh, the thing we've been saying all year long is we think that the uh, the, the ceiling for what this team can do, certainly offensively, is maybe even higher than it was last year. Um, but with a lot of, uh, you know, uh, only one senior on the roster, it's been kind of inconsistent offensively. But like you said, we saw the Wichita game. Certainly uh, how, how good it can look when everything is clicking. Yeah, so far it's uh, nine and two atop the conference, having now taken the top spot away from the Tulsa Golden Hurricane after they lost two straight. So, Basically, the Cougars have been just kind of, you know, gliding right along, not getting, you know, not getting a lot of the hot, the, the heat. Wichita State was hot early and was getting a lot of the press. And uh, they, you know, Cougars just kind of keep on keeping on. Yeah, it's been, uh, it's been, uh, that's, that's kind of the the Kelvin Sampson uh, way. It seems like that's been every team since he's been here is uh, that, you know, just the beginning of the season. They don't always start out with, uh, with all the hype, may have lost some players from last year. And then as the season progresses, it just kind of, uh, the, the Kelvin Sampson you know, uh, mindset takes over and you just see the guys continue to get better and better defensively uh, to continue to uh, put out incredible effort uh, rebounding wise. And it just seems like every team that he's had since he's gotten here just has gotten a little bit better and better and better as the season went on. And certainly Houston has hasn't necessarily been the uh, the team to get the most headlines. It's kind of bounced around from maybe Memphis to uh, to Wichita to some to Tulsa to some other teams. But uh Kelvin Sampson, I think, has just kind of remained quietly confident in his guys, and they've uh, they've made him they've given uh, good reason for him to uh, be acting confident. So, 
talk about this Cougars team. Uh, you know, who has become the leader of this basketball team? Yeah, it's been kind of a uh, an open debate. I think uh, Nate Hinton is probably the guy I would come to first as kind of the uh, the leader of the team, kind of the heart and soul, uh, real effort guy, uh, which is impressive as a sophomore uh, for him to already be uh, kind of taking up that mantle. But he's someone uh, that I think uh, you're just going to see incredible effort from. He's uh, one of the leading rebounders on the team, one of the better rebounders in the conference, despite, uh, you know, being like a six, five guard. Um, and he's something who just, he just seems to always make the right decision. Always seems to be in the right place. Uh, seems to be playing defense. Well, grabs a lot of rebounds can get his own shot as well. Um, and he is someone who I think is just kind of typified what, uh, you, Kelvin Sampson wants to see from his teams, which is just toughness and effort and uh, defense and rebounding. And he has certainly kind of typified that culture. And really, even as a freshman, you could see it already kind of uh, germinating last year. Even with all the leaders, you could tell that Nate Hinton was going to be one of the guys who was going to, uh, before long, kind of uh, you know leave his, uh, his impact and his mark on this team. And he certainly has this year as a sophomore. And you talk about the uh, the job that Coach Sampson has done. As you said, he just kind of keeps uh, keeps things right rolling right, right along. Um, what do you think has been his best coaching trait this season? Um, I think you have to just look at uh, how how hard he has these guys working on the glass. Uh, this hasn't been uh, his best shooting team that he's had. Um, if you look at the Cougars' numbers, especially on two point shots, they don't uh, they aren't the best team he's had at, at uh, putting the ball in the basket. Um, but just from you know the tip off from game one up until now, this team just worked so incredibly hard uh, on the uh, on the glass, and they've just I. I I haven't checked for a couple of games. I believe last I checked, they had not, not been out rebounded in the game all year long. And uh, that has won the Cougars a few games where even the offense was just stagnant and didn't feel like it was going anywhere. And, you know, you just feel like, oh, we're having this, this, you know, in the boomer bust offense of the Cougars this year, even some bust games, the Cougars have come out on top. And it's been because just from one to five, every single position on the court, those guys rebound so incredibly hard. And uh, that has made the Cougars really, really tough to deal with. So if they're, even if they're not making shots, they're a real tough team to deal with. And if they actually are having a good offensive game and the shots are falling, then uh, the Cougars are darn near unbeatable. And uh, what about the one game suspension that Dejan Giroux had? Was that just a, just a little blip on the radar screen and just a, a young man being a young man sort of thing or yeah, we kind of said on our podcast, I don't, I don't think even Dejan Giroux knows what was going through Dejan Giroux's head when that happened. I wouldn't be surprised. It was someone that uh, the staff has talked very highly of, uh, someone who has uh, had to really endure a lot of personal tragic loss in the last uh, few years, um, and, and someone who's been overall a good kid since uh, the moment he stepped on campus at U of H, and definitely seems like a blip, and I, I couldn't pretend to uh, to know what, what he was thinking when he decided to uh to bite down on a Cincy player there, but I uh, served a suspension and uh, came back and had a uh, pretty good game against Wichita. So I think uh, Dejan and the coaching staff are just ready to put the whole thing behind them. And now we have, uh, what is it? Seven games left in conference play. And as we have seen in the American, there are no easy nights on the floor. In most cases, the Wichita state game, notwithstanding, but uh, now for the Cougars uh, trip to South Florida, SMU, Tulsa, Memphis, Cincinnati, UConn, which has re- had been a little resurgent of late, and Memphis again, it's uh, definitely a, a, a tough stretch down schedule-wise, at least on paper. Yeah, the Cougars didn't really get any uh, benefits from the two teams that look like they're, you know, for the most part, not going to pull up too many trees, East Carolina and Tulane. Uh, Houston only got each of those teams one time on the schedule. So uh, the other 10 teams in the conference, uh, and even Tulane has pulled, you know, and you see you can pull it in the upset here or there, but uh, every other team in the conference, definitely good enough to beat anybody else on a given night. So Houston has been uh, pretty fortunate. They've had a couple of close games. They've uh, been maybe a little bit lucky to, uh, to like escape with a win over UConn recently. Um, and even, you know, as much as it, it feels good to be in first place, sole possession of first place at this point right now, uh, like you said, there's zero games remaining on the schedule that Houston can pull up and, you know, roll out a, uh, you know, a C effort or something like that and expect to uh, to win because the rest of the conference has just gotten that much better this year. All right. Well, uh, Dustin and Sam, of course, we uh, are, are down to one guy on this particular thing because we've lost one connection. So uh, give us the rundown on your Scott and Holman podcast to let the folks know uh, about everything you guys got going on. Yeah, uh, anywhere that you download podcasts, you can search Scott and Holman Podcast. We do spell podcast, P-A-W-D-C-A-S-T. Um, and we uh, love talking to the Cougars every week year round. We do a lot of uh, AAC 
talk as well. So uh, I know we got a lot of we listen to a lot of other podcasts. We got a lot of the other uh, podcasters from around the uh, the conference that like kind of checking in on everyone. So if you're one of those people you like knowing what's going on in the AAC, uh, even if you're not a U of H fan, I think you'll uh, have a good time. Uh, Scott Nolan podcast anywhere you get your podcasts. We also are avid Twitter Twitterers. So if you are uh, stuck on that site as well uh, at S H P A W D C A S T, we love talking uh, AAC sports with uh, just about anyone who will listen to us. So definitely uh, give us a follow over there. All right. We appreciate you guys being friends of the AAC report. And uh, again, we'll invite folks to listen to your podcast as well. Thanks again for uh, being here. Hey, always fun to talk to you, Jeff. Thanks for having me on. And we do thank Dustin and Sam, Sam and Dustin. We give them both equal building, even though we lost Sam's connection due to the Skype and internet gremlins. They do a good job over there with their pod to cast as well. The Cougars are now ranked 19th in the coaches poll, 20th in the AP poll. And as we record this podcast on Wednesday, they sit at 9-2 and in conference. Cincinnati a game back at 8-3, and Tulsa now 3rd. At 7-4, and four, the player of the week in men's basketball, James Booknight, the freshman guard from UConn, averaged 22.5 points, 4.5 rebounds, and 2 steals, and a pair of wins for the Huskies. Last week, his, it was his first two 20-point games of the season, and uh, his 23 on against Cincinnati on Sunday was a season high. And the freshman of the week, Darren Green from UCF, averaged 19.5 points, 2.5 rebounds. The Knights picked up two wins last week. He scored a season-high 26 with six three-pointers against the Golden Hurricane on Sunday. Coming up next, we look at women's hoops and other conference news and notes when the AAC Report continues in just a moment. Are you tired of the endless money pit of paying rent? Do you have a home you need to sell for top dollar? Talk to the Hometown Advantage award-winning real estate professional and fellow UCF Knight, Blake Blayhut of Realty One Group. Blake has proven to produce results and a smooth process for his clients all across Central Florida. Whether you're looking to buy your very first home or looking to downsize or upgrade, talk to Blake Blayhut. Visit him at his website, blakesorlandohomes.com, or contact him anytime at 407-748-0484. Again, blakesorlandohomes.com and 407 748 484. Get the hometown advantage by working with Blake. Hello, Night Nation. This is Andrew Fagley reminding you to tune in every Sunday morning at our new time, 10 to 11 a.m. on ESPN 580 Orlando for Nightline the Morning After. Brought to you by Chad Barlaw. We'll be taking your calls and your texts reacting to the previous week's UCF sports action, and you never know who will show up. Once again, that's Nightline the morning after, every Sunday morning, 10 to 11 a.m. on ESPN 580 Orlando or TuneIn Radio. Go Knights and charge on. We turn our attention now to women's basketball as the AAC report continues. The player of the week was Sydney Harvey, sophomore guard from USF. In their lone game of the week, Harvey, career, Harvey tied her career high, dropping 25 points in the Bulls, dominating 99-51 victory over Temple, going 7-10 from the field. All field goals from beyond the arc for a career high in three-pointers. And also 4 for 4 for the free throw line. Dished out a pair of assists and had a couple of steals in just 28 minutes of action. And uh, it's a double honor for South Florida this week. The freshman of the week, Alina Sinecki. Her second straight honor for freshman of the week this season. And she tied Harvey with a game high 25 in that Sunday win over Temple. And that is a new career high. 21 of her points in the first half. 8 of 18 from the floor with a trio of three-pointers and a perfect 6 from 6 from the foul line. Also closed out her stat line, 3 rebounds and 4 assists. In the standings, as of Wednesday evening, 5th rank UConn holds the top spot at 10-0. Tulane is 2nd at 7-3. and 
with Cincinnati and USF tied for third at 6-4. and four. By the way, UConn had another marquee out-of-conference date with top-ranked South Carolina and were defeated by the Gamecocks 70-52 to as the Huskies were unable to overcome a rough first quarter, scoring just two points in that opening frame. The Huskies overall in the season are 20 wins and three losses. Turning to softball now, Tulsa, UCF, and Houston all receiving votes in the major national softball polls. Enjoyed strong starts to the 2020 softball season. UCF posted a 5-1 and record at the Black and Gold Tournament, defeating Indiana twice and earning wins over Duke, Clemson, and St. John's. Houston posted a 4-1 and mark at the Houston Invitational. That featured wins over UMass Lowell, Valparaiso, Fordham, and Northwestern State, and Tulsa. Went through the competition at the Mercer Invitational in Macon, Georgia, as the Golden Hurricanes swept past Tennessee Tech, Eastern Kentucky, Mercer, and Dayton. The player of the week for women's softball, Justine Molina from UCF, shined in her debut, guiding in that 5-1 week for the Knights. The Boise Strait transfer batted 600 with nine hits, 10 RBIs, four runs scored, and uh, a tremendous opening uh, for her as a UCF Knight, and UCF also claims the pitcher of the week, Leah White. Had a good start to the season, four appearances during the event over the weekend, a 3-0 record, a 1.47 ERA, holding opponents to a 191 batting average while striking out 24 in 19 innings. Turning to lacrosse, American Athletic Conference teams are combined 4-2 and two in the opening weekend of the college lacrosse season. Florida Temple, Vanderbilt, and ECU all came away with victories to start the season. The schedule picking up big in Week 2 as four games against nationally ranked opponents will face American teams this week. The ledger begins Wednesday. UConn will start their season with a matchup against Fairfield, while Temple looks for a 2-0 start against as the Owls host Rutgers. Lone game on Friday, Cincinnati headed back to Marquette in search of its first win. Saturday slate headlined by a pair of games against top five opponents, Florida, which moved up to number 12 in the IWLCA rankings. Following a season opening win against Colorado, plays a second of three straight games against ranked teams with Saturday's match at number one, Maryland. Temple will host number five, Princeton, as the Owls continue a six-game homestand to start the year. Two more games against ranked teams set for Sunday. Vanderbilt, which won a season opener, against uh, Northeast Conference champion Wagner is back on the road and face ACC runner-up Boston College, which is ranked number 14. UConn, meanwhile, will take to the road to face number 20, James Madison. And it still sounds strange to say University of Florida within the American, but it is for lacrosse. And for the track honors, let's look at that. For the Men's Track Athlete of the Week, Chris Borzor. Sophomore from Cincinnati clocked a time of 20.92 in the 200-meter dash to win the event at the Charlie Thomas Invitational. He's the first Cincinnati's men's runner to ever finish under 21 seconds at that distance. And the Field Athlete of the Week, Miles Marhofer of Houston, established a Houston program record in the weight throw for the fourth time this season, covering 21.4 meters to win the event at that Charlie Thomas Invitational. The Women's Track Athlete of the Week, Chica Uwawande of SMU, first place finish of the 400 meter dash at the Notre Dame Mio Invitational, crossing the line at 53.52. And Taylor Scaife is the Women's Field Athlete of the Week. It's a repeat honor for her and uh, won the weight throw for the third time this season at the Charlie Thomas Invitational, winning throw of 20.85 meters. Turning to tennis. The AAC Women's Tennis Player of the Week is Jackie Nylander, the freshman from Stockholm, Sweden, who attends SMU, was 3-0 in both singles and doubles play as the Mustangs improved their 2020 2020 record to 6-0 with three wins last week. And the American Athletic Conference Men's Tennis Player of the Week is Gabriel DeCamps, junior from UCF. He is a repeat as the men's player of the week. He went 2-0 at number one singles and defeated a ranked tandem in his only completed doubles match last week. He was a straight-set winner in singles against the nation's number 43-ranked player of the Knights, 5-2 loss to number seven, Wake Forest, and he took a three-set win at uh, number one in UCF, 6-1 victory against Virginia. So there you have it there. As all the results come to you, uh, we want to make sure we always recognize the players of the week in their respective sports. 
it's always good to give those fine young athletes a shout out. Before we close up, as always, please follow me on Twitter at Jeff Allen underscore 88. And please like and share this podcast and all of our Nightline Sports Network shows wherever you get your podcasts. You could also join me for my personal podcast, Jeff Allen Sports Talk. Go to JeffAllenSportsTalk.com for that. This has been the AAC Report only on the Nightline Sports Network. I'm Jeff Allen. Thanks for listening.